art. But I wondered if I could still do my art. And sure enough, I could. I started off as a pastel artist, and I wanted to um, do portraits of people. And, I, and, and I, I did that, that was pretty good and everything. But I wanted to start doing larger pieces, and I wanted to do colorful pieces. And so I went to uh, Blix, and I saw all these beautiful colors and papers, and that's how it all began. It was like it was a match made in heaven. This is what I'm going to do. And I started doing collages. And people were instantly drawn to them, attracted to them. They loved them. And so I started doing more. And collages were really kind of easy for me to do. And I was wondering, how is this so easy for me? Why is it so simple? And then I remembered you were an educator for almost 20, 27 years. You were doing bulletin boards all that time. <laughs> so I think my training came from my education and being doing those bulletin boards. Hey, Sabrina, <laughs> how you doing? So, so anyway, that's how I, I, I basically started. And then um, I did not know any artist. I didn't know any artist at all because I had been out of the art field for a very, very long time. And so when I started working, I went over on Livernoise because there are a lot of art galleries and, and studios and artsy type people over there. And I went into a, um, a Joe's gallery and they looked at my work, I had it in the car. They looked at my work, and they said, we want to give you a solo show. We want to give you a show. And so it started from there. And, it, and it almost immediately, all my work sold out at that show. And yeah. <laughs> and while I was there, um, Henry Harper and uh, David Whitaker came in. And, and they wanted to buy some of my work. And they told me about this group of people who would meet together. They were artists and collectors and, and art enthusiasts. And they met at a restaurant. And they sat around the table and talked about art. And they invited me to come down. And so I came down. And sure enough, there were people there who wanted to hear about my art. And more and more people started coming, more artists, because cause sometimes you could sell your work, which was a good thing. And, um, and so more and more artists started coming, and, and, and eventually it turned into what is now known as the Detroit Fine Arts Breakfast Club. <laughs> Woo-hoo! If you are an artist, I behoove you to make your way over to the Detroit Fine Arts Breakfast Club because it is a place where you can show your work to other artists, to, other, to collectors, to um, people from the art galleries. You can show your work to all of these people. You get two minutes, two minutes, two pieces, and two minutes to show your work. And so anyway, that's what I did. And that's what a lot of people did. That's how I got my start, actually, in art and knowing artists. And so um, from there, things started moving really fast for me. And I, I'm going to you know, kind of jump to where we are right now. If you know me, and I put everything on Facebook. Everything I do, I put it on Facebook. I put it on Instagram. I put everything. I, my, my brother and sister are here somewhere, and they, have for, they said, don't you dare put me on Facebook or Instagram. And I try to sneak them in every now and then, but they don't like that. But I put everything on there. And because I did that, I'm jumping. Oh, and all of this kind of happened like in seven years. Um, this guy named Eric Firestone Gallery, he was following me on Instagram. And he called me up one day and said, he's, uh, he's out of New York, 
But this particular gallery that he had was in East Hampton, New York, where all the really rich people live. <laughs> so, so anyway, he said, um, do you have any work that I can put in my show? I'm having a show that's coming up. I said, well, I have the Mokehead show. I'm getting ready for my Mokehead show, and I don't have anything. I can't, you know, prepare some work for your show and then do Mokehead. And he said, make the work, send it to me. If it sells, I'll send it back to you for the show so it can stay in the show. And then um, we can go from there. And I said, OK. And when I sent a piece over, I was kind of frightened a little bit because everybody in Detroit, they know me. And I think people kind of buy your work if they know you as a person and know what you're about and know your story. And so I was kind of frightened to send it to New York because nobody knew me there. And it went over really big there in New York. And, and Eric said, I want to do a contract with you. And I said, OK. <laughs> that's, the other, that's the other thing about art. Um, you got to say OK a lot. <laughs> you got to venture out on faith. Like I said, I didn't know anything about um, the art world because I had been out of it so long. But I said, OK, a lot. And can you come over here? OK. Can you come see my show? OK. And because of that, um, you start learning things. So that's what happened with Eric. He said, can you do this? I said, OK. Can you sign this contract? OK. And so I am not afraid of the word OK anymore. I'm not afraid. You cannot be. You cannot be afraid. Don't be scared. You can't be scared to be an artist. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta, like, actually right now, I'm scared. I'm scared because I, I don't have this written down. My husband, where is Stan? Oh, he always tells me, write it down. I said, I can't write it down because I can't think like that. I don't think like that. I just have to talk and do what I got to do. So anyway, um, you can't be scared. You got to take the opportunity and go with it. And I, I, usually, I usually say this as my ending, but I'm going to say it now because I'm going to mix everything up. I believe that everybody is born with a gift inside of them. Just like you're born with a heart, I believe inside of you, God put a gift in you. And it's up to you to nurture that gift, to help it to grow, to enhance it. And, and, and when you do, things start happening for you. Things start aligning in your way. Um, I would not have met all of these people and they would not have come into my life if I did not honor my gift. So you know what gift is in you. And it doesn't matter if you were artist in kindergarten and you couldn't do it anymore for 35 years. It doesn't matter if that gift is in you. You pull it out and you start nurture, nurturing it. Um, Wonderful things will happen. Wonderful things will happen. I have run into so many. I thought my story was unique, that I didn't do my art for 35 years. And then I started talking to other women. And they were telling me the same thing, that they had to stop. They couldn't do that. They couldn't nurture that gift that was inside of them because they had to do, I call it, woman's work. You know, take care of the house, take care of the kids, um, get a job to support the family. But it's there. It is there. And just, just, just believe in it. And things will change. People will come into your life, and they will, they will help you get to where you need to go. 
um, I've said that I, I think God gets mad at you if he gives you a gift and you just let it sit there and stay dormant. So use your gift. And I know some of you in this room probably have that gift and it's bubbling around in your stomach, and, but you're not listening to it. But listen to it. It will change your life. Believe me. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, if those who have ears, listen. And the other thing I wanted to tell you about was that um, I was a, a, a caregiver for the last four years. My mom and um, my husband and I, we took care of my mom. And she became quite interested. Before, you know, when she wasn't living with me, she would say, what are you doing? Mom, I'm doing my art stuff. What is that? I'm, 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 I'm working down in the basement. So she never quite understood what I was doing until she started living with me. And then I would bring my work up because she couldn't use her legs. So I would have to bring the work up. And so she started understanding what my art life was all about. And um, she would see people come into the house and, and, and that's where my studio is. And they, and, and they would be buying my work. And so she started understanding what I was doing. So I'm going to start my slide presentation because I want you to meet my mom. OK. Now, I am not really tech savvy, but I'm going to give it my best try. OK, here we go. So this is me. Judy Bowman, <laughs> collage artist. And this is my mom. Now, let's see. OK. Um, when my mom lived with me, she became like my muse. And everything that I, a lot of my work that I was doing had her in it some kind of way. I did a, a piece called um, Mom in Harlem. And then I did another piece called Mom on Seneca. And then I did another piece called Mom on Belle Isle. And those are all out there. And she kind of crept up in a lot of my work. So she became my muse. And um, she's, she's gone now. And I was kind of worried that uh-oh, mom is gone. Okay, who's going to be my muse? Who's going to be my person who, you know, motivates me and gets me going? But I still feel her presence. She's physically gone, but she's still here. So I'm going to introduce you to her through this video. And this video was done by Danielle Lyle, and it was done for the Kresge. Okay. All right, how you get this going? Oh, wait. Let me see if that works. All right, who's techie in here and who know how to make things happen? I'm pressing, pressing the, come up here, Sabrina, help me, help, help me out. Is it working? Oh, volume. Techie people, come help me because you got you need to hear this. Let's see. Uh, well, anyway, what's happening here? <laughs> what's happening here? Huh? Well, anyway, 
I'll tell you, was it, it's, it's really good. Danielle did a, a, a wonderful job on it. But I am, I am talking about my art career. And right here, Okay. I can't hear it, so let's try and make it go back. I let's took it back. Ahead. Now put, I don't, I hear it from the speakers. Did you turn this off? Mm -mm. I don't, that okay. Work. Well, right here she's saying, uh, this is my father, a picture that I drew of my father. And she said, oh, our, look at our daughter. You would be so proud of her right now. That's what she's saying. And, and here I am saying that my mom influenced me. And uh, Danielle asked me, was she an artist? And I said, she was an artist in her own way. She knew how to make everything beautiful and, 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 and perfect. Like Christmas, it would be just like one way when we went to bed. And then when we woke up, it would be like magic. And she was an artist like that. And so this is one of the pieces that I did of her. And this piece was called, I Kissed a Boy and His Name Was Fred. I, I was talking to my mom about, you know, first kisses. And then she had that look in her eyes. And I always remembered it. And, and I, so I, I did a piece of that. And right here, I'm telling people that I don't really like to dress up. And she says on the, on the other side, no, she doesn't. So I started laughing. But this is my mother and my father in front of my house. And this is another piece of my mom. I hear it somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. But this picture right here, I started going through my photo album. And that's my mom and her sisters. Um, we lived on Lafayette and McDougal. And so this is where I got a lot of my inspiration from my family pictures. And this is me working on another piece. But this piece right here is called Mom on Seneca. And back in the day, kids did not stay right up under the parents. And this is my family. I'm going to go real fast now, try to keep up with this. But they love to dress. And that's how I know how to make my, my people and my collages, because of my family members. And here is saying that we didn't have a lot, but we knew how to carry ourselves, and we knew how to carry ourselves with dignity. And this is a picture of my mom that I did of mom in Harlem. But these, that's a, that's a cousin. That's a cousin of mine. So I put a lot of my family members inside of my collages. And this is done by Danielle. And I wished you could have heard it. And I tried to, <laughs> oh, oh, that's the other thing. You got to always be ready to pivot. When things don't go the other way, you got to be ready to pivot. I am a very good pivoter. <laughs> so anyway, I was born and raised on the east side of Detroit in 1952, and I lived in Black Bottom on Lafayette and McDougal. And this is my dad, and this is me. And this is um, the next slide you're going to see will be a picture that I created from this. And Ed and Karen, they own the original of this. So. Uh, your collectors will follow you, and I'm so happy that they did. But this is the picture. This is the picture. And um, a lot of the pictures are going to have this, this railing right here. We lived on a, the upper flat. And so I made a lot of my work from there. And this is the picture that I created from... Um, uh, my dad and me, my dad holding me when I was a baby. And that's my church right there back in the back, Mary Palmer United Methodist Church. And I got to say something about um, everything that's really, a lot of things that have uh, really happened to me 
has happened from the east side of Detroit. Um, I went to school here. I went, I, you know, I was born and raised here. I got married here. A lot of things that are really, really important to me have happened on the east side of Detroit. And sometimes Detroit gets a bad rap, but that was not my experience. Um, just wonderful, wonderful things happened. I had my first solo show here at MoKid. That was a first. That was another great thing that happened to me. And these are the pastels that I started doing. This is another one. This is a, um, Charlene from The Breakfast Club. I did her picture. And this was my very, very first collage that I ever made. So I was trying to figure out what kind of style I wanted to do in. And so I did some out of tissue paper. But you, as you can see, I've always liked textures and colors. And that's the picture that I use, the reference picture that I use to create this piece. And it's called Hanging Out on Lafayette and McDougal. And in this picture, I asked my mom, I said, Mom, where are you guys going? Why are you so dressed up? And she said, this is just how we dressed all the time. <laughs> and it's pretty much true. Um, in, in my family life, they did not want you going out the house looking any old kind of way. And, but I did anyway, and they said, I don't know where you came from. <laughs> but but this, is, this, this was my influence, all of these people right here. And that's my mom. She likes to wear blue. And this is the picture, the reference picture that I used for mom in Harlem. And that's my mom when she was uh, in her early 20s and she was visiting her sister. You can get a lot of uh, reference pictures from your family from your family trove. Go back and check it out. You know, if you, like, you're like, if you're an artist and you say, I don't have anything to work on or work to do, just go and look at your family pictures. Um, in my work, I try, I call myself a, a visual griot. And the reason I call myself a visual griot is because I feel like I'm here to document what the black community was like. So many times the black community is uh, depicted as, as uh, something negative or you know, down and trodden, but that was not my experience at all. On my, in my community, and I found out it was a lot of people just like me, there was a mother and a father, the fathers went to work, the mom stayed home and made dinner, you had to be in, ho in, in the house by the time the street lights came on. The, these were things that you had to do. And um, in, in my family, if you go out, you're representing the family. You better not go out there acting the fool, because you, <laughs> you will pay for it. So anyway, I wanted people to know that what I, what I saw growing up, so it can maybe change the narrative of how our community and black people are represented. And so that's the purpose of me doing what I do. Um, you know, like the cavemen, they did all the dinosaurs and all of that on the walls, and that's how we knew about the prehistoric time. Um, so my job, I feel, is to make artwork that talks about family life and commitment and dignity and although you may not have a lot you, you 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 do it well you do it good you do good stuff with it and so um when people see my work when people see my work it translates from black people to white people to all people because all people have relationships, and all people have love, and all people have some kind of family memory. And so that's what I am trying to do with my artwork. 
And I have seen people cry when they see my work. I have seen people say, um, that's my Uncle Ray Ray, because <laughs> it looks like the people that we grew up with. And so, um, and I feel so good when I see people relating because they're seeing what I'm seeing and they're feeling what I'm feeling. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Mm. Your artwork has to have an impact, an emotional impact. And um, I put a lot of feeling into my work. This next slide is of my, my family on Seneca. This is called Mom on Seneca. And like I said, back in the day, the kids had to stay in one part of the house while the adults were in the other. And this picture right here, that's my sister. She's in this room right now and she's always dressed up. She has this lacy dress on. Her hair is always nice and neat. She's been like that since she was little. I don't understand it. But, but this, is, this is, I had to put her in here. And this is me. And I'm laid back, got my no shoes on, just pants. And so I wanted people to see that. And this is my brother. And he's looking in, checking on my mom and her sisters. And they're in the kitchen playing cards and, and just having a good old time. But this is, um, this is a picture that I, I do pictures from, I do uh, collages from pictures, but I also do them from memory. And this is, this picture right here is from my memory and this is from my, my, um, my childhood. And this picture, this, the print of this is now in the DIA, it's being, um, on exhibition at the DIA. And in this picture, they, everybody's kitchen was yellow. You had the clock. Um, if you look real closely, you can see the Joy dish soap, and, and there's the TV. That's my dog, Kelly. And the TV antenna had the little foil on it. You had to have the foil. And there's the Jet magazines. And um, there's a picture of my mom and dad. What I do in a lot of my work is I put other pieces that I've done. Like this piece is a piece that I've done. And so it's kind of like getting two for one. And I put pictures of my, um, my Aunt Mary, Aunt Sadie, and all black people had a picture of Martin Luther King in their house. So this is a typical home of a black family on the east side of Detroit. And this piece is called Mom on Seneca. Again, she was in a lot of my work. Now this piece right here, this is me, and this is my cousin Wanda, and we were at Belle Isle. And Wanda was mad at my mom because she made us, well, she made, I didn't care, but she made my cousin Wanda take off her dress and uh, get in the water. And she was kind of upset because her little boobies were showing right there. And so from that, we talk about that and laugh about that. So that's how I created this piece, Mom uh, on Belle Isle. And that's my mom taking the picture. That's Wanda all pissed off and everything. And this is my dad, and he had these kind of shorts, swimming shorts, and he's out feeding the birds. You can see this out there is uh, on display. There's the Wonder Bread. And a lot of black people always went to Belle Isle. That was a cheap, fun, inexpensive way to, to get some sun, to get some water, and everybody has a Belle Isle story. Everybody has a, some of you probably had your first kiss out there on Belle Isle. 
This is Bell Isle. And then this picture right here, this is my family. This is how they dress when they just coming over to the house. This is my brother. He said, don't identify him, but I am. This is my brother right here. He's in here right now. And these are my cousins. And they were always, this is how I thought men were supposed to dress. This is how they're supposed to look. And even when I, when I um, you know, left my family in Seneca, this is how Detroit men kind of dress all the time. They got the gaiters on and got a lot of bling bling and shiny. And so this is my family. These are the people who influenced me. And this piece was created from there. And this is my husband. That's Stan. Stan, stand up. Stan got that same kind of... <laughs> he, he got that same kind of swag. And I think that's kind of attracted me to him. He got that, see that broke down hat and everything? That's Stan. And this is my cousin Red. He's in a lot of my pieces. And that was the reference piece for this. And I have about six or seven of these of red, but different, different uh, styles and forms and things, but that's red. And then I started running out of pictures of my family members, so I started doing pictures of my friends. And this piece is called Proud Papa. And I saw this piece on Facebook, and I called Terrence. I said, Terrence, can I please use your picture to do a do a collage, and he gave me permission, and I think it came out pretty good. And this is my, this is my friend Virgil Taylor, and I asked him to use his, his picture. So uh, I take lots of pictures, so you might be surprised. You might see yourself in one of my art pieces. And this piece right here, my mom, she started understanding what I was doing. And I said, Mom, we got to do a piece together. And so this is my mom on that same banister that I was telling you about on Lafayette and McDougal, and that's my church. And this is her me, holding me, and that's my dad's hat. And she did all of the banisters, all of these wiggly banisters, she cut those out, and then she signed her name. And this was a collaborative piece that she and I did together. And because it sold, my mom is a professional artist. And again, sometimes I do things by, by um, reference pictures, and sometimes I just start working. A lot of people have asked me, how do I do what I do? And again, I think it has something to make in, making all those bulletin boards. But I don't design anything. I just kind of start doing it and just adding on. I'm going to go back to this piece right here. Oh, yeah, when I was doing his piece, I ran out of canvas. And that's how those dangling feet started appearing on my work. I said, it's not, not going to look right if it's just cut off like that. So I just started adding, on, adding more on to my work. And, and um, when I sent that to New York, it went over real big. And Eric said, can you make some more of those dangling feet? So I'm doing dangling feet now. And this piece was created, I was channeling Romeo Bearden. I was in North Carolina. Um, uh, Stan, where was, Sa not Sanford. Uh, yeah, Charlotte. Charlotte, North Carolina. And that's where Romeo Bearden lived. 
And I went to bed and I had this dream about this piece. It's called Mary Don't You Weep. And I got up in the morning and I started working on this piece. And I said, it had to be Romier Bearden. A lot of people say they, my work reminds me of his. And I finished this piece in one day. So I, I, I knew it was Romier, Romier Bearden telling me what to do and how to do. Because I dreamed about it, got up, and I executed it, and I did it. This is one of my dangling feet pieces. This is of uh, uh, Lynette Gibson's brother. I happened to see him. He was at a, a, a museum, and I was looking at him, and I just said, I got to take his picture. I got to make him, because he was just so dignified and everything. So, so this, is, this is Lynette's brother. Like I said, I'm looking at you guys. I'm looking at you. <laughs> you might end up in one of my collages. And this is, also, this is, it seems like I like Lynette's family, but this is Lynette's daughter. And this piece is called uh, The Millennial Curators. What I want to say about this is that in, in Detroit, I have seen that so many young people, they didn't wait like I did to get a job. They just go out and get a job. They become artists, and they just do things, and it just amazes me. It, 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 make, it fills me with joy that they are so brave and courageous that they go out and just say, I'm going to be an artist, and that's all to it. They don't worry about they don't have insurance. They don't worry about that they don't have a pension. They don't worry about where the next paycheck is coming for, from, and they make it happen. So, you know, I kind of wonder if I was born in this time, what would I do? But uh, it is so many artists, young people out there who are, I'm going to be an artist. Back in the day when, when I was coming up, if you told your parents you wanted to be an artist, they said, you better get a real job. But not these people today. And I really admire that. And this is my last slide. And this is uh, the Sankofa bird. And if you go over, I did uh, my first public installation. I told you everything first happens around here on the east side of Detroit. This is uh, right over there. At the, uh, on, it's on the parking garage where uh, Siva Restaurant is in that court area. They asked me to do some work over there, and so I did my very first public installation. I'm so happy and proud about that. And I did the Sankofa bird, and the Sankofa bird kind of um, represents what I do. The San Sankofa bird, you go back, you look back, and you find out what's, what's good, and you take it to the front. And so that is what I, I am a visual griot, and I am a Sankofa bird. And I want you all to do this thing, same thing, look back, find out what's good, and bring it to the front, because people need to see it. And therefore, that concludes my uh, slideshow. I'm not, I'm not quite finished talking, but <laughs> I wanted to know, was, was there any, um, any questions anybody wanted to ask? Yes, right here in the front. Judy, <laughs> I know you want to continue creating art, but what else do you want to do? Ooh, good question. Um, when people first started asking me what kind of artist I wanted to be, I said that I wanted to be an artist and I wanted to have my work hanging in museums. And that has come to pass. And now what I want, I'm putting it out in the universe. You gotta put things out in the universe. 
I want to be studied in books. I want to be studied in colleges. I want, I want to be one of the great ones. I want to be a Romare Bearden of my time. I want to be a Jacob Lawrence. And I'm putting it in the universe. And you heard me say it on February 25th, what I want. And this, too, shall come to pass. Are there any other Hello, questions? everyone. I just want to take this opportunity to invite everyone because Judy is going to be honored this evening at 5 o'clock with her uh, Lifetime Achievement Award <laughs> at Mac Alive, which is 3746 Fisher. 5 o'clock, we will be honoring her. She has a piece in our Ambassador Permanent Fine Art Collection that was donated. And I just want everyone to know that if you want some more Judy, you know what to do. <laughs> Thank, uh, uh, another first, a Lifetime Achievement Award. How about that? All right. In, in it, yes. Hi, good afternoon. I just want you to, to want to say that I'm out of fear, and I want you to know that you are being talked about in colleges, because I would not be here. I'm a photo digital photography student. I am in your age range. Yes. And um, my, my professor spoke about you and referred you to Romero Baird, and, and I'm currently doing a project on your piece of art, Mom on Seneca. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you for being here. I, mm, thank you. Just thank you. I'm kind of a crybaby, so I'm not going to talk too much anymore. But I, 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 to thank you for being here, um, under one of your seats, there's a, a sticky. Oh, you have a question? Hi, everyone. I'm Judy's sister. <laughs> you have to excuse me. I'm not dressed up. I don't, I don't do that anymore. I've gone beyond <laughs> that. But you are being recognized by the education field. Because I was walking, I worked at Detroit Academy of Arts and Sciences. And you know everybody, it's Black History Month. So everyone has to do a Black History Board. I'm just going down the hall, and I look, what? I look. My sister was up on the board with Oprah Winfrey and all that, Obama and everyone. So she is making an impact amongst the children of Detroit. So I'm proud of you, my sister. Okay, they said this was an hour and my time is up. But what I was going to say is under one of your seats, um, a staff member's put a, a sticky on it, and I have something for that person. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you, come on up. For you coming out today, and this is on behalf of all, I couldn't give it, put sticky notes under everybody, but I wanted to give you one of my original. That's it. I have no more. <laughs> <laughs>